In the last video we covered how to find the centroid of several different shapes. In today's video we look at two additional material properties, the moment of inertia and the modulus of elasticity. Here we have a simple beam and this beam is just a 2x4 laying in the plank position. Look at how far the beam bends when a load is applied in the plank position. Now we change the orientation of the beam to be in the joist position. Notice the beam doesn't deflect nearly as much in the plank position. So why would the deflection in the beam change based on the orientation of the beam? We had it in the plank position and then we moved it to the joist position and it deflected far less. I mean, it's the same beam, it's the same material, the size didn't change, in fact, it has this exact same cross-sectional area. So what, what makes the difference? So the answer to that question is the moment of inertia. The moment of inertia is how the material is distributed about the centroid. The further away you can get material from the centroid, the stiffer the object. Every shape has a different formula for the moment of inertia, but we're going to be looking at the shape of a 2x4, which is a rectangle. When the beam is in the plank position, our centroid location would be one half of the width, so it would be here, and one half of the height. So our centroid would be located right about here on the, uh, on, on the board in this position. That leaves us with a very small distance from the top of the board to the centroid and the bottom of the board to the centroid. Most of our area is to either the left or the right of the centroid rather than the top. Both position, and you'll see that our centroid location stayed the same, but now most of our material is either above or below the centroid. So we have a much greater distance this way and this way from the centroid to the edges uh, than in the plank position. Therefore, we would have a much higher moment of inertia, which means this, the beam in this position would be much more rigid. When the beam is in the joist position, the centroid kind of acts as the dividing line between the top of the beam, which is in compression, and the top of, or in the bottom of the beam, which is in tension. So I'm going to draw our dividing line across right here. And then uh, the amount of tension or compression is directly proportional to its distance from the, uh, the centroid. So what you're going to end up with is something that looks like this. End up with an X. The top of the beam, like I said, is going to be in compression, and the amount of compression continually gets greater and greater and greater the further away you get from the center. The bottom, which is the tension, does the exact same thing. So our tension gets greater and greater and greater as it gets to the bottom of the beam. So what we're left with then is a good amount of area, a good amount of material on the left and the right side that honestly really isn't carrying that much load. To further illustrate this concept, we're going to look at the same diagram, but this time on the side of the beam. So I'm going to start by drawing a straight line down, and then we'll take, we'll draw an angled line across. So the top section of the beam, like I said, was in compression. And the bottom section of the beam is going to be in tension. And as we get down to the centroid or the centroidal plane, neutral plane, uh, we actually get to the point where we transition from compression into tension. So at this point right here, there's actually no, it's in neither tension or compression it's in that transition zone. And that is what allows the beam to resist deflection. Uh, you, if you think about it, this being kind of a little bit of a lever, with this being the fulcrum, you have the compression pushing in one direction and the tension pulling in another to kind of balance this lever out. And that's what uh, allows us to resist deflection. That's why it's better to have a longer lever arm and a shorter lever arm. Now all that is assuming we're pushing the beam, loading the beam in this direction right here. 
So that kind of begs the question then, if you think about if a beam were going to be loaded in this uh, position and we had to maybe drill a hole through this beam, what would be the most ideal location to drill the hole? It would have to be here in the middle. You wouldn't want to drill a hole anywhere out here near the edge because that's carrying a lot of load. So the closer to the middle you can get it, the less of an effect it's going to have. All right, so now we're going to do another test. I have two boards here. One of them is pine and the other one is MDF. And other than the fact that they're different materials, they're pretty much the same in every single way. They're both the same dimensions and they both, that means, and they're both sitting in the plank position, so that means they would have the exact same moment of inertia. But uh, I can imagine that one of these materials or that these materials do not have the same, uh, they will not deflect exactly the same. So we're just going to do a simple test. We're going to push this off the edge and we're just going to see, kind of using this edge as the, uh, the end there, if one of these, just by the weight of the material, will deflect further than the other. And as we go down further and further, you can see that the MDF definitely deflects much more than the pine. So the results of that test are not real shocking. We all know that some materials are more rigid than others. So for example, we know that steel is more rigid than wood. Wood is typically more rigid than plastic. So what we can take from that is that each material behaves differently under a load, and the modulus of elasticity helps define that behavior. The modulus of elasticity, by definition, is the ratio of stress to strain, which we're going to dive into in a later lesson. But for now, in layman's terms, Elasticity is basically the stiffness of a material based upon its composition, so what it's made of. Every material has a unique modulus of elasticity, and each shape has a unique uh, moment of inertia. These two material properties, along with some other variables like applied force and the length of the beam, are going to help us in our next activity as we solve for beam development.